Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you've been following my projects, you already know my daily driver Ford Pinto. In a recent turn of events, this little Pinto here is about to make a cross-country road trip to the great city of Detroit. Now that's about a 3,000 mile round trip from our house here in Austin, Texas. And while I mostly trust the mechanical condition of the Pinto, there are a few things that need to be addressed before we hit the road. Now the trip is estimated to take about 20 hours of driving each way which means I need to do something about how noisy the cabin is at highway speeds. Now I attribute most of these chirps and squeaks you're hearing to the bad old cracked dry weather stripping. Next, I need to tie up some loose ends before we hit the road. Namely, I need to change the oil and when I put in my new fuel tank, I reuse the old fill in seal and of course, it developed a leak. So uh, I ordered myself a replacement. Last, but certainly not least, I need to do something about my Pinto's interior. More specifically, the carpet. Now, physical appearances are going to be pretty important because the whole reason we're traveling to Detroit is to spend Christmas with my fiancé's family. And uh, this is going to be the first time I meet a lot of them. And my Pinto's carpet is certainly not up to snuff. As I mentioned in my previous video, I was pretty hard on my little Pinto in my college years. This includes all the grease stains from working professionally as a mechanic for the past 10 years and the ragged leftovers from swapping the C3 automatic to my current 4-speed manual transmission. Let's get started. Alright, so before anyone goes on a road trip, uh, it's a really good idea to shake down your car. You know, check out the suspension, make sure you don't have any leaks or anything major going on. Uh, I know I'm due for an oil change and change the oil, uh, look for other leaks I might have, and, uh, and get this thing ready for about 40 hours of driving. Alright, so first thing before I drain the oil, I want to check my front end a little bit. Make sure I don't have any play in the tie rods or in the ball joints. I got just a little bit of play from the wheel bearing, but nothing too bad. I have noticed that the sway bar links are really starting to show their age. These are the original sway bar links for the car. The rubber has just deteriorated quite a bit. Um, and you can check that with a pry bar. And it just has a little bit of up and down movement more than it should. So, get some new sway bar links. Now, moving under the car. Now the first thing I noticed is I do have a very slight power steering seepage coming from the pump. It's not enough to really alarm me yet. I'm not even certain I'm going to keep power steering on this car for very long. As a 2200 pound car, you really don't need the assistance. Other than that, everything looks pretty good. Now, I do have some damage to my air dam here. Um, <laughs> this broke free a long time ago. I remember hitting a really large snow bank when I was living in Montana. And I uh, seem to have broken these tabs that secure it up against the core support. I think I might do the old uh, Frankenstein zip tie trick. Take these bolts out and uh, zip tie this up just to make sure it's not flapping around on the highway causing problems for me down the road. Plenty of coolant. 
Belts look good, nice and tight. We've got a new voltage regulator. Had my alternator overhauled not too long ago. And I think that's it. It's another one of those things that, I don't know why I waited so long to do that, but I'm sure glad that I did. Now a few of you with really sharp eyes noticed that at the beginning of my last video, my Pinto was wearing these American Racing mags. And at the end of the video, my Pinto was wearing these Wheel of Antique Chrome Smoothies with the Baby Moon center cap. Now, while there are several reasons why I switched my wheels, the most important one was tire size. You see, my old American Racing mags are only available in 14 inch wheels with the Pinto four on four and a quarter bolt pattern, which means I need to run 14 inch tires. And there really just aren't very good quality 14 inch tires being made anymore. So, I went from the old 14 by seven wheels to a 15 by six. Now why 15 by six? Because it's the same wheel size as a Toyota Prius C. And thus, there are a lot of tire options. Now when I installed my American Racing mags, it required that I change the lug nuts out. And I went from the factory Acorn nuts to these deep metrics, just so they would fit inside the wheel. Now a side effect of that was my factory tire iron no longer worked with the car, which meant I had to carry a big glunky star wrench around just in case I got a flat. A side effect of going to this steel wheel is I can reinstall the factory lug nuts and go back to carrying around my slim and trim factory lug wrench. And while I've got the old impact out, I might as well check my rear brakes. Wow, surprisingly enough, there's still plenty of meat on there. And these are the, uh, the factory shoes. Maybe when I get back, I'll throw a new set of shoes on there and rebuild those wheel cylinders. We'll see. It's about time I tackle those sway bar links. Whoa! Top came clean off that one. You can see how worn out that rubber is. It is cracked and worn and it's not even straight any longer. Yeah, that's definitely the source of all the clatter. Bushing is totally shot. You know, one of the things I love best about this car is it seems like no matter what you have to replace, it only takes 15 minutes. Oh man, I cannot wait to try that out on the highway. Now, of course, this little seal isn't available if you search for it in normal parts store channels. But what I found was Ford used the same 
fuel filler neck seal for our Ford Lincoln Mercury from a certain year range. So I ordered one for a, uh, I believe this was a Crown Victoria 1979. We'll see if it works. All right, so here's my filler neck. Uh, this time I'm gonna take a little more care cleaning this thing off. Uh, probably put my whiz wheel on it, get it really nice and clean, and then coat it with some grease. It does look like, though, my seals are the same. This one, of course, is a little more prolapsed of being around a filler neck for 40 years, but it looks like the ridges are the same, the diameter is the same, ID and OD. So uh, maybe chalk this one up as a win. Hey guys, I just want to take a second and talk about a really strange phenomenon uh, when it comes to shopping for parts for this car. Now, I spent a long time just trying to find a windshield for this car. You know, door striker bushings, even the, the fuel filler neck seal is, is really difficult to find and you end up having to find a part that's close from another more popular model. But then there are times where I find unbelievable things, reproduction parts that are even better than OEM, uh, like this carpet. This is a carpet I just ordered right off the line, and it's a form fit, color correct, better insulated product than the original uh, by, uh, I guess this one's by Auto Custom Carpets. And I just can't believe my luck when I find things like this. It's just a really, really strange thing that this car is so hard to find parts for sometimes, and sometimes the parts just fall right into your hands. I don't, it's weird. Okay, back to the carpet.
All right, well, I got uh, most of the carpet together. I got all the holes cut and the uh, carpet looks fantastic. I even have my new trim ring here installed. Um, I still have all the trim pieces left to do, the stainless steel and all that, but it's time for me to go to work. So this is gonna have to wait until tomorrow. All right, it's the next day and uh, the carpet looks great. I drove it to work last night. It felt like a brand new car. Uh, it's amazing what carpet can do. Um, before I finish putting all the trim back together, I, uh, I'm going to take the wire off my fuel pump and I think I can run it inside this gutter and run it out through a little hole in the bottom there. Uh, if not, I'm going to have to find a nice grommet for it to run and lengthen the wire, and which isn't that bad. That's kind of what I planned on doing. But, started with the fuel pump and then put the trim together. Well, it looks like I'm in luck because I found a grommet back there that'll be perfect for my power wire. It drops out right down next to my fuel pump and uh, looks like I have a shielded path all the way back there. So, lucky day. Well, I should say uh, almost lucky. My wire is a little short, so I'm gonna need to stretch this before I can properly plumb it. But, that's not that big of a deal. Well, the new carpet's in, and I have to say, it looks fantastic. Uh, this is another one of those things where I don't know why I waited so long to do it. It really improves the quality of the experience of being in this car. But today's mission 
is going to be the weather stripping. And you can see this weather stripping has just had it. It's absolutely fragged. And I even have felts for internal. These felts fell out a long time ago. So when this window is halfway up, it clatters. When that window is all the way down, it clatters. Um, that's another one of those things that uh, makes people not want to ride in my car with me. So, And in a uh, weird twist of events, this is one of those parts that I was able to find uh, reproduction parts for. This is made by Steel Rubber Products. I found a kit for the three-door Pinto, and that included both door seals and the hatch. I'm real excited to get this going. I have not had good weather stripping in about nine years. I know that this weather stripping doesn't need any sealant. It just clips onto this lip here. Um, but I'm gonna lay some sealant down up here anyway because of the way the Pinto's headliner is attached inside the hatch. What's happening is water is collecting on this and then running down inside the car. And uh, that's part of the reason my carpet was ruined. So. I'm just going to paint a little bit of that all around here and uh, hopefully it'll be good for another 10 years. Alright, so I thought that I had the window channel felts, um, but what I ended up having is the, uh, the wiper seal, you know, the little seal that man i really need to learn the terminology for this stuff i need to talk to a trim guy um but this basically sits in the door here and i need the trim that goes around the outside in the channel so i'm not sure that'll be done by the time we head to detroit but it'll get done eventually i am excited to try out my new weather stripping well, I have to say, I am extremely pleased with the improvements I made to my car. The new carpet makes the cabin feel brand new. I have good peace of mind knowing that the mechanical components of my car are in good working order. And I also know, if we go crazy on this cross-country trip, it won't be because of chirps and squeaks from the worn-out weather stripping. There it is. Okay. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to be notified when I release new videos about this project or any other project I'm working on, make sure you ring that notification bell. You see that? No. Now, there's a couple reasons that I made the switch. Some of them political. Oh, I should have the microphone. The, uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs>